Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Garage Door. Today we're gonna to head over to Lakeland. Our good friend Aaron has introduced us to another one of his friends, and we're gonna go check out this cool car that does wheelies. You know, the last few Behind the Garage Doors, we've taken Tahoes and Suburbans and trucks and Camaros. Today, we're back to the vet. All right, we made it out to Emo's house here in Lakeland. Emo, thank you so much for inviting us out. We really appreciate it. No problem. I have seen this car one other time at a Cars and Coffee, and I am so excited to see it again. So let's see what's behind Emo's garage door. So first of all, I want to tell everybody, first of all, that this is, I think, the second or third episode in a row that we have done uh, a Behind the Garage Door with a friend of our friend at work, Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. Linkwist, who, who is, we still haven't done, actually, we still haven't done his car. We still need to do that. But before I start, if you have a, a friend that, that has a cool car, you're in the Florida area, or you have a cool car or anything else, please contact us so that we can get you on the next episode of Behind the Garage Door. Now, Emo. The Vega. I'm a fan of Vegas anyway, so tell me all about this Vega year. How long have you had it? Um, since 2008. Okay, so it's not a recent acquisition, but nope, not, I, not like a whole lifetime car. I bought the car from a gentleman that used to drive it every day. Okay. He worked for the Polk County School Board. Okay. And um, one day I approached him at the car show because I had a Nova and I didn't really like it that much. Mm -hmm. and. I wanted another Vega, but every time that I found one, they were always cut up. You so know? you're a Vega guy from? Oh yeah. Okay, all right, good. Absolutely. Good. What year is it? 76. How many Vegas have you had? Oh God, <laughs> 20 of them. Really? Oh, when I was a kid, that's all that, that was the cheapest thing to build. It's true. You, know, you could go to the local junkyard and get a small block, a turbo 350 and dump it right in there. The only thing is that nobody made headers and kits you they make didn't them all yourself yeah they didn't come up for a couple of years prior to that now it's super easy oh now you can buy just about anything i don't want to call them a dime a dozen but are vegas super easy still to acquire no no really no they're getting harder and harder because most of them ended up race cars well i mean it's it's a logical move small car doesn't weigh much doesn't take a whole lot to make them fast no so what all have you done? What was it like when you first got this car? Um, it was a back half car. Okay, so it was already back half. No roll cage. Okay. Um, that was about it. It had a 350 in it that was bored to 355, had a mild cam, had a turbo 350 tranny in it. It cracked me up because when I bought it, when I traded it, I didn't know that it only had a single track rear end. <laughs> and it was tubbed? And it was tubbed. <laughs> So I, I went to get on it one day and it smoked the heck out of one tire and I was like, oh man. That's just embarrassing. Oh man, it was. <laughs> it was. That's embarrassing. But it looked cool. It had these 18.5, 32-inch tall Mickey Thompson tires on yeah, it yeah. and it was all jacked. It was crazy. But Same size tire in it now? That's a no, big tire. Now it's got a 31, 13.5 Hoosier. Okay. Um, it's a street tire slash drag tire. Okay. So you can drive, and this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is a street car. Yeah, it's a street legal tire. 100% street car, yeah. and, and, and you drive this thing. I do, all lot. the time. Because I've seen it on the road, I've seen it at, at you know cars and coffee and stuff. What's it run? Um, the fastest I've had it so far, it's been 970 at 147 in the quarter mile. Wow, when was that? Uh, about a year ago. Okay, you have that same tune in it now, or is it detuned? Yep. Really? Yep. Same tune in it now. And you drive it on the street and roll. And I drive it. Well, all I gotta do is turn the bottle on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's that. Turn the bottle on. So what motor's in it? It's got a 400 small block in 400 it. 400 small block. Conventional no, 400. Nothing cubic crazy. Inch. Um, it's a bow tie block with okay. dart heads, dart intake. It's got um eagle crank, scat rods. Uh, Wiseco Pistons, it's got a Doug Herbert roller camshaft, it's 658 lift. Nasty camshaft. Yeah, and it's all mechanical rollers, got stud girdles on it. And so it's no joke? No. How much do you spray? It's got a plate on it, it's good up to 500. 
Okay, what do you spray? Two fifty. Okay. <laughs> I've had it at four hundred, and it makes the car too violent. I bet. It wants to get up on the wheelie bar, and I'm like, nah. So you shoot it straight out of the hole? Um, it's controlled by a controller. Okay. You know, it's, so out of the hole, and then it, it kind of comes. It, on. it just tells it, you know, when to turn on or how much to send for the launch. Okay. And then after that, it's all on me. Yeah, there's no electronics in the car other than the trans brake. I was gonna say, do you foot brake or it's got a trans brake? It's trans brake. Wow, it's turbo trans 400 brake. or 350 now? Power glide. Power glide. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yep, it's set on a button, so when I mat it to the floor and I release the button, then the nitrous turns on when the trans brake turns off. Oh. And it's all kind of automatic. You don't have to do nothing but hold the button. That's a nice, nice build. Um, I, got, I gotta ask, do you ever get any crap from the cops about all the stickers in the rear window? No. Really? I've been pulled over a couple times and it's just to look at my car. That's, uh, you know what, <laughs> cops that do that, thank you, because first of all, we're like, oh no. And they're like, we just want to look at your car. And it's like, oh, no problem. <laughs> I've had a couple times coming back from the car shows and it'd be 1030 at night or something, yeah. you know, and coming down Cumby Road, it's kind of busy late at night. Yeah. And uh, I, next thing I know, I look and there's lights behind me and I pulled over and I have my, driver's license and registration and insurance card Ready hanging out the window and they'll push it back in and go step out well, i want to look at the car <laughs> uh, okay cool. that's cool that's happened to me a couple of times too and it's always it's it's a relief and kind and very flattering yeah as well so i like how you so your name's emo i like how you put emotion on the side of it i didn't do that who did that aaron aaron he thinks of everything that was here it make a story I got crazy with it and made these crazy headers that came out the front of the fenders. It had big old bull horns on it. Okay. All right? Yeah. And um, I didn't like it. One day, one of my grandkids walked by the car and hit it with their head. Oh, no. And it made me mad, so I took the saws on and cut them off because I didn't want the kids. I don't mind people walking up to my car and opening the door and looking at it. It's a car. That's yeah. what it's meant yeah. to be looked at, you know? And. Uh, so I told Aaron, I said, Aaron, I got another set of fenders. You wanna, I'm gonna change them. You paint them for me? He says, no, I'm gonna fix your fenders. <laughs> so he took the time and cut a hole out and patched it, welded it all in, no bondo. Can't even Same tell. Same fender? Yeah, the two front fenders right above where the little indicator light you know, is at. You know, I think the first time I saw this car, they were actually coming out of the fender. Yeah. So you, that's all been redone since Aaron's such a good dude. Yeah. He's, and so talented. So he painted the whole front clip and then, when I got the car, it had these rubber inserts on the bumpers. Yeah, yeah. He took them all off, and Bobby Huff, Bobby Huff, had welded all the holes up, and yeah. then Aaron did all the bodywork, repainted the fenders, and I didn't know. When I did some work on his car, I did carpet job and did door panels on his car so it matched the rest of the interior. Uh -huh. And he says, "You can't come and get your car yet," and I'm like, "Why? Your car's done. I want my car back. I want to go to car show tonight." And he says. <laughs> You got to come later. Oh, all right. You're busy. I understand. So later came and I drove his car to the shop. And when I get there, he won't let me in the shop. And I'm like, man, what's up with is my this car? Bobby or Aaron? This is Aaron. Oh, okay. You know? And I'm like, what's up? And he says, man, I got a surprise for you. So when the surprise, when they backed it out, and I was like, motion, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was his idea. I'm not mad at it. Nope. I'm not nope. mad at it. It's uh, He did... Um, Lee, the, with the gold Nova and the white Nova. Yes. He named the white car. I can't remember what's, what it's called off the top of my head. Oh, God. Oh, anyway, so we'll go back and, and research that. But he named that white car, too. Yeah. So that's that's funny. So, Emo, your business is upholstery and interior, right? Mm -hmm. So Aaron told me this story about, because you do convertible tops as well. Yes. He told me, and, and if you have a picture of this car, I would love to see it. He was telling me about a convertible top that you did on a donk where the whole frame of the oh. of the convertible top was chromed and you made a clear convertible top. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Gentleman come in and he asks, can you make a clear top? And I'm like, I have to figure out if they make wide enough plastic, which they do. They make, a, it's like a 30 gauge plastic uh -huh. and it's not UV treated though. So you have to kind of be nice when you're out in the sun. Yeah, and it especially was, here. I, it, it took me a couple of times of figuring it out because when I made the top the first time and put it on it, the plastic wanted to stick to the frame. Yeah, yeah. And see, the the, the com them old convertibles have uh, what they call a pad, and it runs along the length of the car, 
and the top sits on that, not on the frame. Okay. But when you make the pad and you want to see everything, they had to be made clear too. So I had to get kind of slick and take the soft side of Velcro and wrap the bars underneath. I gotcha. Wherever the plastic was so it wouldn't touch because at first it wouldn't go up and down. How'd it turn out? It turned out cool. Guy liked it? Yeah. He had it for a couple years like that till it got so hard yeah, I would that it wouldn't open and close anymore. Yeah. Cause I told him, you know, eventually that plastic's gonna turn hard. Yeah. Just like, you know, if you see a convertible with a faded back window, the back windows oh. dried up and eventually hard. This, especially, especially here. This sun will destroy and when you. Start just about washing anything. them with soap. Oh, that does it. That, oh, yeah. That messes them up. So I'm assuming you've done the interior and everything in, the, in your Vega. Um, it has a full interior in it with stereo and everything. Tell me you never turn the stereo on. I always no. do. Do you really? Oh, yeah. See, I, I, you guys that, that do that, we have these badass cars with these perfect engines that sound so good, and then you put a stereo in it. I'm like, I would never listen to it. Well, I did it just because I like to see everybody's expression when I go to the track. Because, you know, I'll back it out of the trailer mm -hmm. and everybody's standing around at tech looking at each other, talking, and I'm sitting in my car with my stereo jam. <laughs> All right, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that makes sense. All right, that's good stuff. Well, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a, let you get a plug in your, in your business, Emo's Upholstery. Emo's Upholstery, phone yeah. number? 666 uh, 6994. All right, all right. If you're in the Lakeland area and you need a, a convertible tops, I do convertibles, uh, full interiors, custom interiors. I do uh, boats. I do RVs. Good. No. All right. Well, you know what, Emo? Tell me something else. What's the, what color is that? That is 1963 Impala SS. It is, isn't it? Yep. And just with a matte black stripe. Yep. So cool. So absolutely cool. You did the cage? A uh, friend of mine, Jose, did it. He's uh, Rod's Customs. 400 small block glide, nine inch? Nine inch Ford with a 456 gear in the rear end. I've got a tall tire and only two speeds. Hey, still cruises on the interstate at 55. Okay, you know? I was gonna say you're not gonna be, you're gonna get past on the interstate, but you can keep up. I can keep up if I wanna spin it up a little bit harder, but 55, it's turning almost 3000 RPMs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with it. That is a tall tire. Yep. And it'll put it'll put it up on do you do you bring that wheelie bar down a little bit? No. It, it'll I've put got, it up on that. I've got it there just because to feel safe. You know. But it has put it up on the on the bar? Oh yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got a picture in the house. It's about to touch the bumper before I had the wheelie bar on it. <laughs> is that the picture that's hanging in Bobby Huff's place? Yes. Okay, I've yep. seen that picture. Yep. That's a great shot. Yep. Emo, I, uh, I, I, what else can you tell me about the car? I, I'm so, I love this car so much. I'm a little starstruck by it. It's um, it's all steel, yeah. fiberglass hood. Okay. Still got the factor crash bumpers and everything on it. Um, it weighs 2,790 pounds with me in it. How did you get five it so light? gallons of fuel and a full bottle of nitrous? How is it so light? They were light anyway. Are they really that light? 2790? 2790. With you in it. With me in it. Holy crap. Yeah. I didn't I knew they were light and they were small and everything else. I didn't realize they were that light. That's why you can make them go fast with you, but not a whole lot. A lot of people would put a stock 350 in it and they would go fast, you know. It's true. Wow. What a great car. And you've had it since 2008. Any plans to do anything else with it? Or are you pretty happy with it as it is? Um, I'm happy with it. It needs to be repainted, but I have so much fun with it that I don't want to take it apart right That's now. That's the problem. And, and I've ran into this problem with my Camaro. I got it to a point and there's still so much to do to it, yeah. but I won't stop long enough to, to tear it apart and do the things that are, that, you know, that are wrong with it and fix it, everything else. I really need to do that. Here's and a, so many people are like here's that. Here's the funny part. That paint job was done at the Makos here in Lakeland in 2008. <laughs> Holding up. Hey, I told them, I don't mind you painting my car, just put good paint on it. Uh -huh. And that's what they did. They put a lot of, they put good paint on it. Good. They put a lot of clear on it. And like I said, Aaron's painted the front fenders, the bumpers, the bumpers twice. <laughs> I'm looking for where that hole was above that turn signal and I don't see it. You know, He's so good. If I open up the hood, you can see, you'll it. see it. Yeah, but from the outside, no, no. Ugh, that's fantastic. Emo, thank you so much for having us out. Thank you. Sharing your Vega with us. 76 Vega, 
400 small block with a glide, nine inch. We'll put it on the bumper, bunch of nitrous. Bunch of nitrous. Love it. We're gonna head back to the dealership and wrap it up. Emo, thank you so much for inviting us out to your house and sharing that Vega. It's not, uh, we've had some, some pretty quick cars on the show. I don't know that we've seen one do a wheelie quite like that. Bobby Chevelle brought it, you know, brought up the front wheels quite a bit, but man, oh man, that Vega is something else. And a nine second street car. How cool is that? Make sure you keep checking back for more episodes of Behind the Garage Door. Stingray Chevrolet, relax, enjoy the difference.